Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we use a concrete buggy to pour an interior concrete floor. Hey, if you guys don't know me, my name is Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. We specialize in pouring concrete floors and slabs and stamp concrete, staining concrete, uh, concrete repair, all kinds of concrete flat work. And that's what my YouTube channel is all about. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, please go, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification. I'm coming out with a couple videos a week about all this kind of stuff, trying to teach you guys what we do and how we do it. And uh, if that's the kind of stuff you like, then go ahead down there and hit subscribe. So this concrete buggy we're using, it's got, it's got dual wheels on it. It holds about 10 to 12 wheelbarrow fulls at a time. So it makes pouring interior floors like this pretty easy if you have the access. Now we could have line pumped this thing, but a, a pump truck for us in Maine costs about $900 to get a pump truck here. And to rent this power buggy, it's only a hundred bucks. So, you know, it's quite a savings right there. And it's not really that much harder to power buggy this versus line pumping it. So we decided to go with, uh, with the power buggy on this one. As you can see, it's kind of a rainy, yucky day today. It's cold. It's about 50 degrees out, um, but it's a good, good inside job. We're right downtown Portland, Maine. If you guys have never been to Maine, um, Portland, Maine's a, a really nice city. If any of you have been to Maine before, go ahead down there in the comments and say, yeah, I've been there. And if you've never been to Maine, get, give me a no down there and let me know. Uh, Maine's really nice to visit, especially in the summertime. You know, we got Usually May, June, July, August, and September are really good months to visit Maine. So if you, any of you guys want to come to Maine here, let, let me know down in the comments. So as you can see, I'm walking, I'm walking behind this buggy now. It does have a little ramp there in the back of the buggy I could put down and stand on it if I wanted to, but I'm being really careful buggying over this wire mesh. And you know, there's a couple pipes there I didn't want to hit. So that's why I'm just taking it nice and slow and, and walking behind this one. This thing goes really easy. It's got a it's got a little lever there for forward and backwards, and then it's got a separate lever to, to dump the concrete just like that. It probably saved us I don't know at least an hour from wheelbarrow on this, maybe an hour and a half. And then uh, again, the line pump, if you use a pump on something like this, when you get done pumping, there's always about a quarter to a half a yard of concrete left in the pump truck that the pump guy has to just dump on the ground. So there's no place to wash out on this job. So we didn't want to, we didn't want to leave that concrete on the ground either and have to pick it up later. I don't own this power buggy. Like I, like I said, we rent it. We don't power buggy a lot of floors. If we did, I'd buy one. But this thing sure makes it easy. So this is going to be a, this place is going to be a medical marijuana facility. It's called a Seaweed. If any of you guys have these medical marijuana facilities in your states popping up all over the place, give me a yes down there in the comments. If if you don't, just give me a no. We got them in Maine. They're popping up everywhere. We're doing. We're doing floors and slabs for buildings for these medical marijuana places all the time now. I don't know if they're really regulated or not yet, but they're popping up everywhere. So where, for some reason, this this building didn't have a concrete floor inside it previously. These people bought this, and it was just the way it is. It had it had that concrete out around the edges, but it didn't have a floor inside it. So we're matching that concrete all around the outside edge. And then eventually they're going to have somebody come in and polish this concrete. And that's going to be the finished floor. So we got to make sure we match that edge really good all the way around the outside when we go to power trial this thing. When we pour concrete floors like this, we like to do sections at a time, what I call a bay. And a bay is equal to about... The length of that straight edge we're using a 14 foot straight edge 
so we'll pour out a bay that's about 14 by 14 you know 15 by 15 and then the guys can work on getting that bay straight edged while I'm pouring concrete next to it and doing another bay that way it just keeps everybody busy and you know it gets the floor done in a system systematic way Darren's using the laser there to shoot a pad I like using that Topcon it's an RL5B laser uh, I've used that for years and years it's perfect for doing what we do here I have a link for one down in the description if you guys want to check that out all the tools we use are, will be down in the description guys we use Marshalltown tools and if, if you guys want to use any of these types of tools Marshalltown's given me a special discount for all you guys. If, uh, if you use the link down in the description to go to Marshalltown and you want to buy any of the tools there on their site, just make sure you use the coupon code EAC when you check out. And Marshalltown's going to give you guys 10% off on any tools you buy, whether it's a screed, a bull float, a, a come along, a rake any hand tools, uh, vibra screed, any power trials, anything you get from them, use that coupon code EAC. As you can see, Darren's pulling the wire up as we go. We didn't put anything under the wire to keep it up because I gotta run that power buggy over it. And that just would've made running that harder. But we'll just pull it up as we go. We, we use uh, fiber mesh in the concrete too, so it's got kind of a double reinforcement this is a 3500 PSI concrete mix we're pouring today. We do have a little bit of accelerator in it too just to help it dry a little quicker since it's so chilly and damp outside. So you can see we got that first bay straight edge. Now we're working on the second bay. Still using, this is going to be 20 yards of concrete so we're still working on that first truck right now. We're probably pouring about a five inch slump today. It may be just a little bit stiffer than we normally pour. We usually pour around a six. Just because it's so cold out. You can see how fast that power buggy makes it. That thing's relatively easy to, to learn how to use too. Most, most tool rental places will have one of these. Either ones with dual wheel tires like this or some of them will have tracks on them kind of like a kind of like a bulldozer has tracks some of these buggies have tracks yeah, we're getting down towards the end of that first truck now again we're going to power trial this thing really really smooth the guy that does the polishing we don't do the polishing but the guy that does the polishing likes a really smooth hard trial concrete floor when he comes to polish so we'll make sure this thing's good and smooth good and flat and it'll make the polishing process go that much easier yeah you can see Darren and Luca finishing out that first truck we're kick screeding this floor too as you can see we have a vibra screed we use matter of fact the shockwave from Marshalltown is a really good vibra screed I would definitely recommend getting that one if you're thinking about getting one but we just decided to kick screed this since since power bugging is a little bit slower than dumping it right out of the chute um, the guys just just decided to kick screed today Luke's running that bow float over it getting it nice and smooth yeah I'm out there mixing up the second truck now that's why there's a little time in between dumping concrete alright here we are on the second truck I gotta go around those two pipes. Definitely don't want to hit those. <laughs> Again, guys, if you guys like this kind of stuff, if you like concrete floors, slabs, pool decks, patios, sidewalks, stamping concrete, go ahead and down there and hit subscribe now and hit the little bell notification. I've got all kinds of videos about that kind of stuff. If you want to check them out, I'll have a link to a couple of them at the end of the video here. I also have a concrete slab course guys if you guys want to learn how to pour concrete or how to install a concrete slab I have a course I've made 
and uh, it teaches you everything you need to know about forming and pouring your own concrete slab. It'll save you a ton of money versus hiring somebody. Um, it's, it's my 39 years of experience learning how to form and pour concrete slabs, all my tips, all my little secrets. So I would that's down in the description too if you want to check that out. There, I'm just going back and forth, dumping that concrete, about eight to ten wheelbarrows at a time. This is a five inch thick slab, so a buggy doesn't go that far really when you dump the whole thing out. You can see my laser over there. Somebody else did most of the prep here. They did the they did the vapor barrier. I did all the drilling and pinning. You can see those little pieces of rebar sticking out from the existing concrete. I drilled and pinned all those and I, I put the wire mesh down, but somebody else did the vapor barrier. I'll have another video coming out soon about how to drill and pin like that and you know laying that wire mesh. But this one I just wanted to show you the pour and how we use this concrete buggy to our advantage. We used to wheelbarrow back in the day when I was in my 20s. We'd wheelbarrow a lot, but not anymore. We don't wheelbarrow anything anymore. We'll use this buggy or we'll pump. I had a guy using a wheelbarrow once and the wheelbarrow started to tip over a little bit and he tried to stop it from tipping because he didn't want to dump it. And he actually threw his back out just trying to stop the wheelbarrow from tipping over. So we definitely don't want any injuries. That's why we use powered machinery whenever we can. Yeah, we're getting down to this last bay now. It's probably been about an hour and a half since we started. And you can only go as fast as the power buggy can dump. You can see I'm driving down off the edge of that concrete onto those boards. I didn't I didn't pound in the, the little pieces of rebar right there. Oh, that's my daughter Tia. She's my videographer. So when I get a couple more dumped, we'll take those boards out and then we'll tap in the rebar in that last little section. I didn't put that little piece of wire in either because I didn't want to be driving over it with the power buggy until the very end. Yeah, you can see Luke, he's driving in those last little pieces of rebar. We want to pin these two slabs together because we don't want anything to move once it's all dry and hard and then the guy comes in to polish. So we make sure that we, we drilled and pinned about every two feet. And that'll hold these two slabs together nice and tight. I think total I drilled about 80 of those pins in there. It's really important that when you pour and you're matching concrete that you get it perfect. You don't want it low, you don't want it high. Otherwise it's going to just create a lot more work for you when you go to finish. Especially low if you're low. If you're high you can scrape it down a little bit but if you're low trying to fill it back in is a real pain. Yeah, we're going to just shovel the rest out. And that should be all the concrete we need. You can see that thing, they call it a mud buggy. It has a lot of power. We've used it going up hills, and it'll haul that concrete up a lot of hills pretty easily. Now Darren's going to finish bull floating that thing and then then they're going to have to sit and wait an hour or two before they can start finishing. Well again guys, if, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. If any of those tools, you like any of those tools we're using, just check them out down in the description. The concrete course, the concrete slab course is down there in the description. You can check that out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video, guys.